welcome back. We've now come to Movie Spotlight, our Friday feature, reviewing the latest releases in Korean cinemas and online. And for that, we are joined by our esteemed film critics. First, the right of me, we have Jason Beshevace. Hello, Jason. Hi, Jang. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And to my left, we have Darcy Paquet as well. Hello, Darcy. Hi. Happy to be here. <laughs> yes, today we are doing something that we've not done in a while. We're discussing two new Korean blockbusters that are out now in cinemas. It's been a while since we've been able to do that. The first was released last week, and that is Hansan Rising Dragon, or Hansan Yonghye Churyeon in Korean. It is a prequel to the 2014 box office smash hit, The Admiral Roaring Currents. And a third film in the series is coming as well, I understand. Jason, can you tell us about this trilogy first, centred on the uh, famous Korean Admiral Lee Sun Shin? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it began with the Admiral uh, Roaring Currents, or Myongyang, uh, in 2014, sold s over 17 million tickets. You know, extraordinary the, the number of viewers that it attracted. It's, it remains the most successful film ever in Korea. It was directed by Kim An Min. Uh, one of uh, his most well-known films before that was War of the Arrows or Hual uh, Roaring Current starred uh, Che Min-sik as uh, the famous uh, Admiral Yi Sun Shin uh, who led victories against the, the Japanese Navy during the uh, Imjin War uh, in the 1500s despite being significantly uh, outnumbered uh, and uh, yeah Yi Sun Shin is a, he's a figure I think Koreans you know generally hugely admire mm. regardless of where they stand politically and in 2004 the timing of the film um 2014 was, yeah sorry 2014 uh the timing of the film was quite interesting because uh there were three films set out at sea this was the the year of the sail ferry sinking and there was some concern as to how well these films would perform but i in fact because i think you know there is low national uh, kind of uh, morale mm. uh, I think uh, it really spoke to people in a really big way and uh, so now we have two other films that are forming part of this trilogy uh, we have the prequel uh, which is Hansan the film that's on release this week um, and then we also have uh, the film No Young uh, which stars Kim Yun Suk as Admiral Yi that depicts the final battle uh, of the Imjin War Okay, so that's the background to this trilogy. Darcy, what battle does uh, this new film hone in on? So this takes place five years before the events of the previous film, and it's the Battle of Hansan uh, in the year 1592. So the Admiral at this point is, um, yeah, I mean, establishing himself within... Mm. Um, A know, bit more green. Yes, and so he hasn't... Uh, he doesn't have the reputation that he had in the, in the middle film, but he's played in this film by Pak Hae-il. Uh, it's a very different kind of performance than what we saw from Che min -shik. A lot of viewers have commented on the fact that he doesn't have a lot of dialogue in the film, and mm. that he uh, seems to be thinking very intently for much of the film, but keeping <laughs> things close to his chest, and then it, it's revealed towards the end. Uh, but he's plotting this strategy in order to deal with uh, this invasion uh, led by Wakisaka, who is played by Pyan Yohan. Uh, like the previous film, the, the Japanese characters in this film are played by Korean actors, which is another uh, thing that some people might criticize or some people might argue that it you know helps the box office to have a mm. kind of recognizable, some star power <laughs> in those roles. Uh, it also stars An Sung Gi, uh, Son Yeon Ju, uh, mostly an all-male cast, uh, except for Kim Hyang Gi, who has a small but interesting role. Sure. Now, despite the first film, The Admiral Roaring Currents, being the most successful local release of all time, uh, Jason, I understand that you weren't actually a fan of it. Uh, why was that? <laughs> and how uh. does this film compare? <laughs> I just found the first film just a real hard slog. Uh, it's really clunky. The first hour of the film doesn't... Uh, it's just not a lot going on. There's a lot of talking. And then, you know, you have the battle sequences, which I just didn't think were all that aesthetically interesting. Mm. Uh, it was a bit bland for me. Now, of course, you know, I'm, I'm not a Korean. So um, clearly, it, you know, it was resonating with viewers. And that surprised me. Um, you know, I went to see the film before its release. And honestly, I didn't see it 
hitting you know 70 million missions sure. that being said I, I don't think many people did um and yeah and so critically i don't think the film really attracted much attention certainly overseas it didn't uh, but i think this film hansan is is a better film it's tighter it's more disciplined uh, it has a more interesting cast i think pacquiao he doesn't say an awful lot uh, but I, I actually preferred him to chamin i mean chamin is you know he's obviously a very powerful or he has a very powerful presence on screen mm. uh, and pacquiao is, is a bit more nuanced i think um as as this famous admiral and there's also an you know an interesting uh, ensemble cast uh it's a shame we don't have have many uh, females in the cast sure uh but uh, yeah overall i thought it was a, a stronger film the battle sequences are, are impressive um and i think in terms of the the, the film's pacing it is, it's far more effective interesting uh darcy what do you think did you not enjoy the admiral that much as well like jason or do you have different thoughts about it yeah i had a hard time connecting with the admiral as well i think mm. that i mean at the time that the film came out um, I think I remember there was a lot of discussion about leadership and that, you know, because I think of the particular time period that Korea was living through, right. like uh, a lot of people looked up to the kind of leader that was presented in that film. And that was a talking point that right. also led to its mm. box office success. Uh, you know, these days, I, I think that's, um, I don't know, it's not, doesn't seem to be a, a real talking point in the way that it was when the original film was released. Uh, you know, the structure of the film is incredibly simple and it's, Oof. you know, it's just, you know, you have an hour of talking and then an hour of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, you know, in some ways it works. You know, most films don't do that. You usually have like a three act structure or sure. whatever. This is mm. just kind of preamble and then fight. But, uh, you know, despite that, um, you know, this film, I agree with Jason that it's kind of better executed. You know, the there's been some improvement in the technology um, you know, visual effects and everything else. And, mm. uh, and just the way, you know, it is a bit tighter, which gives it a bit more energy, I guess. Right. So overall, uh, both our critics saying it was uh, perhaps a better film than the uh, most successful film of all time <laughs> in Korea. Uh, Jason, uh, how do you see the film performing this time? Do you see it at least perhaps not reaching the success of uh, The Admiral, but uh, how's it doing so far? It's doing okay. Um, it's sold over 3 million tickets uh, but uh, so far, but it's, you know, it's way behind the pace of The Admiral. I mean, the pace of The Admiral is just ex truly extraordinary. I mean, it's sold almost 8 million admissions uh, in, you know, after nine days. Um, the pace, yeah, just, I think took a lot of uh, industry observers uh, by surprise so i think it will do it will do fine uh will it be this huge box office hit i don't think so uh it's, it's just not accumulating the number of missions it needs to mm. uh and the word of mouth doesn't seem to be as strong um but uh, yeah, it'll, it'll do fine, uh, but it, it's not going to break box office records. Sure, it should still help the local industry, right? Which has been suffering so much over the last couple of years. These uh, numbers aren't bad. Yeah, that's true. The numbers aren't bad, uh, but usually during the summer, you will have a big box office hit, and we haven't really had that yet. Mm. Alienoid was a big box office disaster. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's CJ's big budget uh, temple for the summer. It's a two-part series. And Chaitanya is usually very consistent, but the film was it just just didn't connect. And this Hansan's doing fine, but it's not you know it's it's not uh, like I say breaking box office records. And uh, the next film, Emergency Declaration, well, the word of mouth is just pretty okay. <laughs> disastrous. <laughs> okay, let's get into that now. Okay, uh, we we'll move on to our next blockbuster. Uh, turn to the skies for this one. It's Han Jae-im's Emergency Declaration, or Pisang Sanon in Korean. It's uh, largely set on a passenger jet. Darcy, I understand that uh, it has a big ensemble cast. What can you tell us? I mean, it really does have a huge ensemble cast. And, you know, Song Gang-ho, Lee Byung-han, Chan Do-yeon, Kim Nam-gil, Im si uh, It just, and then, you know, it goes on and on. It's directed by Han jae -dim who has, you know, films like The Show Must Go On and Rules of Dating, and he's, a, uh, he's had some big successes in the past. Uh, it screened at the Cannes Film Festival last year out of competition. Uh, and then it's been waiting for a release. You know, it's, uh, 
it's a victim of the pandemic in a couple different ways because you know it originally would have been released long before this uh, but also the screenplay was written before the pandemic and the story concerns right <laughs> of releasing a virus on a plane right and yes we, you know we've all become experts on viruses in the meantime <laughs> and I think, so that if it had been released before the pandemic audiences might have been a little bit more forgiving perhaps right of the science involved you mean okay interesting yeah. <laughs> well yeah there's that <laughs> <laughs> okay jason we'll let you off the leash get into it Oh, what did you think? It? Well, it's a train wreck. Um, I mean, <laughs> I have an interest in aviation, so I know a little bit about planes, and nothing makes sense. Um, <laughs> you, you have this Im Shi Wong character uh, who basically is literally going, in, going to the check-in desk and asking about, you know, passenger numbers, and that doesn't set off, you know, a red flag, um, and, and yet he manages to get on a plane um, and uh, infect everyone. Uh, and yeah, no, it's just nothing. It's just all nonsensical. Uh, it's incredibly melodramatic. And you can have a dumb movie mm. and have fun, right? Mm. We've got snakes on a plane. Uh, you've got airplane. You've got, you've got these, you know, these kind of iconic Hollywood films that, yeah, they're a bit stupid, but, you know, you're having a good time. Sure. And they're never taking it too seriously. But this film, it kind of tonally is a bit weird because, you know, it's on the one hand it's quite serious and you've got all the melodrama there and some co critics here have commented how actually how qu quite real it is because uh, you could imagine some of the scenes uh, play out in the way that they do mm. uh, but uh, you know I, by halfway through I was like this this is preposterous and then the final sequence I don't want to give if you if you haven't seen the film then uh, <laughs> but anyway there's there's a there's a landing and it's truly ridiculous and uh <laughs> Um, yeah, Yi Byung-hun does what he can, he, he, you know, he, 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 but it's, it's not right. enough to save what is a terrible movie. Right. Sorry. Oh, really, some star names <laughs> in it as well. Uh, Jason, clearly not impressed. And Darcy, <laughs> uh, would you also agree that this is a train wreck or plane wreck, shall we say? <laughs> a disaster movie. A disaster <laughs> <Yes>. movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, un it's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, some aspects of the film played out. I actually like the first hour okay. I mean, the, I mean, certainly if you're the kind of viewer who needs things to make logical sense and mm. <laughs> you enjoy them, this will particularly torment you. But, um, you know, up until the first hour, I think that, you know, you did have this kind of momentum. You have, uh, you know, kind of cross-cutting between events on the plane and mm. events back on the ground. Uh, there are a number of uh, quite eye-raising coincidences that take place that connect all the various characters, you know, in the way that often happens in disaster movies. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's true The I think the director was very ambitious. I think he tried to do too much. Mm. I think that, and uh, kind of pushing in multiple directions at the same time. Sure. And so you do get the sense that it kind of spun out of control. Yeah, uh, quite literally. Um, <laughs> but I, I am a huge admirer of Han Jidim. I mm. love uh, some. I love. I love many of his films. Mm. Uh, Rules of Dating, The Show Must Go On. I like The Face Reader. Uh, the King has its problems, but I still like it. Uh, but this just felt like it was something that he he just wasn't comfortable doing. And uh, yeah, um, it it's just it's really frustrating. I've seen it twice now, and. Um, yeah, no, I, I can confirm it's a terrible movie. But some critics here have really got behind the film, actually. So, uh, you know, uh, audiences don't seem to be too keen. Uh, but some critics are, are defending the film and they've given it quite high scores. But so, yeah, it does have its admirers. Uh, and who knows, maybe it'll become a cult classic. <laughs> Well, I, I doubt it, but... <laughs> well, I understand it's had a good start at the box office. It came in at number one on its first day of release, ahead of Hans Han. So people seem to be seeking it out. Uh, again, could that at least be good news for the uh, Korean film industry? I think certainly theatres uh, are seeing this summer as, you know, <laughs> the, first in a long t the first time in a long time where, you know, finally there's some... Um, excitement over you know the films that are being released and people's attention seems to be focused on the theaters and you have these four blockbusters which is um you know a lot of them are just incredibly expensive and they're they're very different in style and uh i think that people you know it's playing out a bit differently than people expected mm. um in this summer i think that also the box office dynamic is a little bit different because i 
you know, you don't have th- uh, viewers really crowding into theaters immediately as soon as a film is released. Uh, I think that uh, films are playing longer than they used to. And, uh, you know, people's viewing patterns are different. So word of mouth, I think, is even more important than it is in a normal summer. And so we're sort of waiting to see what, you know, which of these four films ends up with the best word of mouth. Mm. Um, you know, we have another coming out next week uh, that people are very positive about. Hunt. Yeah, yeah. sure. And so yeah. that's something to look forward to as well. Okay, so that was Emergency Declaration. Uh, we'll wrap it up there, Jason Darcy. It's uh, been a pleasure as always. We'll see you next time. Thank you and take care. Have a great weekend.